But for the purpose of this introduction, I don't want to delve too deeply into ISOs. I want to keep us concentrating on aperture and shutter speed. Because it's easy to think once you've understood this diagram that yeah, well that's great. Whenever I set an aperture of f4, I just set a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second and likewise with the other combinations. The tricky part is this relationship, this combination that I've written down here applies only to one specific lighting setup and one specific ISO. If either the light conditions or the ISO change, then this relationship changes. I'll demonstrate that again by putting ISO on the shelf for now. Just forget about ISO. Imagine that this relationship between shutter speed and aperture works for an overcast day. I'm going to split the aperture and shutter speed with a pair of scissors. Okay, so I've now broken that relationship between the aperture and the shutter speed. Because I want to, what I want to concentrate on is the fact that the relationship is not fixed. It's in flux. It's in constant change. Imagine now that we have the sun partially obscured by clouds. That's the kind of day it is. And your light meter tells you you can use f2.8 at 1 500th of a second. I want you to imagine now that some more clouds come along and begin to obscure the sun. That means there's less light around. That means there's less light coming from your light source, the sun. Therefore, your subject will be darker. Therefore, you need to let more light into the camera. So, what will you do? Well, you take this aperture, 2.8, and you need to open the shutter for longer, for 1 250th of a second, perhaps. So the relationship changes to here. Now, for this particular lighting situation, f2.8 at 1 250th of a second is fine. f4 at 125th of a second is fine. And 5.6 at a 60th. Let's say that a thunderstorm appears and it goes completely black. The sun is virtually completely obscured. The relationship may change by another f-stop or stop of exposure, as we would say. It may change by more than that. You may end up at 2.8, f2.8 at a 60th of a second. After the rain clears, the clouds clear, suddenly it's one of those beautiful days where the sun comes out and there's not a cloud in the sky. So we now have direct sunlight, very, very bright. There is a lot of light in the scene. Therefore, you can use a smaller aperture and a faster shutter speed. So this relationship then changes in the opposite direction, okay? We can now perhaps use an aperture of 5.6 at 1 500th of a second. I find again, this idea of visualizing the light helps to link exposure to your camera, to the subject matter. So how to put all this into practice, how to reinforce the apertures, the shutter speeds, the relationship between the two in your head. Well, let me get rid of these. And just put down a little exercise for, for you to do. You need a digital camera, which has a manual mode. And we're gonna use that to explore exposure. When you set a digital SLR, 
to manual mode, uh, the exposure, the metering, uh, is often recorded through a little scale, and I'll draw a diagram of that. You have a straight line with little bars on it. In the middle, that's the bar at which a pointer will point when you have the correct or what the camera is interpreting as the correct exposure. To get that little pointer to the middle, you can change the aperture or you can change the shutter speed. If the pointer heads in this direction, that is normally underexposing. You'll have a minus sign. If the pointer heads in this direction, that's normally overexposing. So the first task in this exercise <clears throat> is to set an aperture and a shutter speed that situates the pointer in the center. Okay, let's say for example, and I'll start with shutter speeds and apertures now, we have a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second at an aperture of f8. That, in our imaginary scenario, has got the pointer to the middle. What I want you to do then is just change the aperture. Change the aperture to one aperture wider, f5.6, and see where the slider goes. Should it go overexposed or underexposed? Have a look. Then change it to f4 and see where the slider goes. And of course, go the other way. Change it to f11, then f16. All the time looking at where the slider goes. Now, if the image is overexposed, the slider should head towards the plus side. So from eight to 5.6, if the lighting remains the same, should be one stop overexposed. And to four should be two stops, two f-stops overexposed. Conversely, if you reduce the amount of light, so let's just draw f8, f5.6, f4, f11, f16. If you reduce the amount of light to f11, well, it's gonna underexpose. Reduce it to f16, it's underexposing by another stop. Once you've done that, you can go back to f8, if that's still, if the lighting hasn't changed, if that's still the correct exposure, 1 60th of f8, and do the same thing with the shutter speeds, okay? Set one shutter speed longer, 1 30th of a second, another shutter speed longer, 1 15th of a second, and see which way the slider goes. Go the opposite direction to 1 125th of a second then one 250th of a second. Now, from a 60th to a 30th is twice as much light. The shutter is open for twice as long. We should be overexposing by one stop. And from 30th to a 15th should be overexposing by another stop. Conversely, if we go from 125th of a second, sorry, a 60th to 125th of a second, we are underexposing. There is half as much light getting through the shutter. And to 250th of a second, it's half as much light again. Set your camera up on a tripod if you have one, or in a windowsill, just pointing at a, a scene with a range of brightnesses. Outside is ideal, where you've got a range of brightnesses. Get your correct exposure, according to the camera, and then begin to change shutter speeds and apertures individually to see what happens. Once you've done this experiment, what I would then like you to do is to find the correct exposure again, change your aperture to either a wider or a narrower aperture, and see what you have to do to the shutter speed to keep the marker in the middle. In other words, if you increase the light coming through the lens, how do you decrease the amount of light coming through the shutter to balance the exposure? Okay. And you can see from this 
little table, this little set of figures here, what you would do is, if you increase the brightness of the light coming through the lens, you can reduce the light coming through the shutter. If you increase it by another stop, you can reduce it by another shutter speed. And if you reduce the amount of light coming through the lens, well, you need the shutter open for twice as long, you can increase by one shutter speed. If you reduce it further, you can increase the shutter speed to compensate. So you should see with those settings, the marker staying in the middle. Try this experiment, see how you get on. Remember, this is reinforcing what we've been through in the previous videos.